Hey, welcome back. It's Dueling Excel Podcast, Episode 109, Electoral College. I'm Bill Jellin from Mr. Excel. We'll be joined by Mike Gerben from Excel is Fun. All right, great question today sent in by, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, maybe Powell or, yeah, let's go with Powell. Um, Electoral College, uh, this is for his government class. We want to figure out the uh, states with the highest number of votes, which will add up to 270. That's the magic number to elect a president. And the states with the lowest amount of votes, which will equal 270. Uh, my first thought, filter and then use top 10, but top 10 doesn't have what I need, unfortunately. Uh, it's the old top 10, which gives us items and percent. So I'm canning that idea. I'm going out for the pivot table. So let's get rid of that comment here. Show comments off. Insert pivot table. We're going to put it right here on the current worksheet. Bam, there. Click OK. All right, name going down the left hand side and vote in the heart of the pivot table. We'll move the field list. Uh, this gets us the exact same list. Wow, that wasn't anything. Ah, but check this out. A couple things. Uh, first of all, more sort options. I'm going to sort descending based on sum of vote. That gets the largest states to the top. And then here's the one I really was looking for. Value filters. Uh, just outside of the screen, it says top 10 dot dot dot. Starting in Excel 2007, they improved this dramatically with Items and percent, which we've always had, but also the cool one called sum. So in sum, don't use the spin button, by the way, just type in there. We were looking for enough records to get us 270 as the sum. Uh, click OK. So here we go. Here are the states that add up to 270. California, Texas, New York. Isn't that cool? Uh, and if we go the other way, so back down, back down to the top 10 filter and say that I want the bottom states, that's the smallest states, uh, to get me 270. Uh, now, this here, I'm going to sort the other way, just because I, I think it'll look better. More sort options, ascending, click OK. All right, so Alaska, Vermont, South Dakota, Montana, all three electoral college. As I cruise down here, though, you see that we end up with 282. Why did we get 282 when I asked for 270? Ah, OK, because I asked for 270. If they had given me through Virginia and not New Jersey, I would have ended up with 268, and that's not 270. They need to get me at least 270. So uh, New Jersey is included in the list to get us 282. Isn't it funny that New Jersey is on the margin, uh, is the, the last state in either list. All right, Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Oh, man, that was so amazing. The filter in the pivot table value filters, top 10, some, I had no idea that was there. That's the point. All right, so we'll see you next duel. <laughs> You know, um, doing a pivot table like this, that is the way. The, the formulas that you got to use to do something like this are ridiculous, right? So pivot tables 99% of the time, the only time you use formulas, if these numbers are changing all the time and you want something super dynamic. All right, so I'm going to have to do this in a few steps. I'm first going to use the large function to extract the first largest, second largest, etc. Control shift down our F4, comma, uh, two cells to my left. That'll extract the first and then the second, third, largest, etc. So I copy that down. And then I need a cumulative total. Alt equals. I'm going to shift colon and then lock the first one with the F4 key. That'll give me an expandable range that will add cumulatively as I go down. That range is expanding. So it's right here. That's the cutoff. Now here's the problem. We could do, if there were no duplicates here, which is a crazy assumption, we could just do a straight lookup. But there's, there's 229s, 220s, uh, 216. So you have to switch over to a formula that can handle duplicates as the lookup value. I'm going to use index, and it's a big array formula. Well, what are we looking up? That's the array right there. Control Shift down now, F4, comma. And again, the trouble comes for row number, right? For the first one, 55, which is right there, we need 1, 2, 3. And that'll give us California back to the cell. But down here, we have duplicates. So we have multiple row numbers. And we're going to have to use the small function to extract the correct row number as we copy our formula down. So small, the array. I need row numbers. That's what I need to dump into this uh, row number argument. So I'm going to say if anything in this range right here, control shift down arrow F4 is equal to 
one cell to my left. Now for the 55, there'll only be one. For the 29s, there'll be two, right? Comma. Well, what do I want? That's the condition. What I want is a row number. So I'm going to say row, control shift down arrow F4. That'll give me all the rows, 7, 8, 9, etc. So I need to subtract from that row, F4. That gives me 7 minus 7, which is 0. So I don't want that as the first one. So I plus 1. All right. So I'm going to close parentheses on the if. The, you don't need the false, the K. Now here's another tricky thing. Sometimes when you have duplicate uh, lookup values, you put rows function in the K. So I'm going to comma. That gives us the number 1, 2, 3, 4 as we copy down. But we really don't want that. We want 1, 2, and then 1, 2, and then 1. So we're going to do count if with an expandable range. One cell to my left, I did the right arrow, colon, comma, right arrow, close parentheses, and we'll lock. We're using the F4 key, that right there. So now that'll give us a count as we go down the correct K for the row number to extract. Close parentheses on the small. This if right here, logical test, it's expecting a single true or false. Because we're giving it a bunch, it will require Control Shift Enter. All right, so there's our row number. That's the small. Close parentheses on index. And we're going to have to Control Shift and Enter, not just Enter. And then I'm going to double click and send it down. And so there we have it. We get down to 270 right there, 270. Uh, that's our cutoff. So we could at this point just take this and print it, right? But if you wanted to turn the rest of this on so it was dynamic, we're going to have to somehow pick out this row. Now, if you're in 2010, you can substitute that. Uh, small with aggregate, and then you don't have to use Control Shift Enter. All right, now let's figure out how to find this row. Because the problem is, if this turns to 56, we can't exactly search for 270. I'm going to Control Z and keep that 55. Well, we can find the position of that 270 with a match. I'm going to say match lookup 270 in this range right here. I'm going to Control Backspace, because I don't need to lock that. Right now, if I close parentheses, we can use approximate match, which is the default. And because it's 270, it's exactly correct. It's the 11th record. So then we could use that fact in our formulas or conditional formatting. But check this out. If this is 56, then it gives us the wrong row number, 10, because that match can't find a 270. So we need to add one when 270 is not in the list. So I'm going to say plus match. I'm actually going to do the same little piece here again. But if now if we do an exact match, right? approximate match will find a position when 270 is not in the list. But if we do exact match, this then, because 270 is not in the list, it F9 is the pause, so I have to go up here to Formulas and Calculate. It gives me an NA, Control Z. Well, I can convert that to a true by doing is it NA. And then is NA match exact will give us a true, but when we add using the plus symbol, it'll give us a 1. So it'll always add 1 when they can't find 270 in the list. All right, now that number right there, you could come here and amend each one of these formulas using an if. But check this out. I'm just going to use conditional formatting. Alt-O-D, new rule, formula. And right here, I'm going to say equals, oops, I didn't need to put equals. I could just click right here, E7. But check this out. I'm going to hit the F4 key and lock column reference, but not the row, when that is greater than 11, locked in all directions. Then when it's greater than, that means true, I can turn off something in the formatting. So watch this. I'm going to hit Format. I'm going to say in 2000, in earlier versions, you might have to do uh, font color white. But Number tab, I can go down to Custom, and I'm just going to turn it all off. Semicolon, 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 three semicolons means show nothing, text or numbers. Click OK, click OK, click OK. And so now I should have my uh, setup working. When I change this to 55, it's all working fine. Now, the only thing you have to change for the small version over here is simply use small there instead of large. All the other formulas 
are the same. All right, throw back to Mr. Excel. Well, hey, we'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is fun.